Hey, Lindsay here with GoJango. So today I want to talk about a topic that I get in emails every so often, also get it in general conversation, and I see on Reddit and other forums every so often when doing Django development, and that is dealing with migrations across different branches during development. So let's set up the scenario. The scenario is I am developing feature X and I have five migrations in it. You know, it could be regular migrations and data migrations and other things like that. And then I switch over to feature branch Y and it has migrations on it. But now I am stuck in a situation where the migrations over here are conflicting with the migrations over here. The other scenario is uh, feature branch Y has migrations in it with the same number in an app as feature branch X and feature branch Y gets merged. So now what do I do? How do I deal with that situation? Because now feature branch Y is in master and feature branch X is still being developed, but it has different numbers migrations and they could potentially be conflicting. It's a very frustrating problem for a lot of people and it really isn't a great solution other than developing a process for you and your team to use. So what I'm gonna describe is a process that, that my team uses that I work on and have used for a long time and it works out fairly successfully. It can be a little bit frustrating uh, when you first start dealing with it, but it works very well and we rarely ever have any problems, but it's definitely something that you have to do and you can't automate in any sense. Well, I changed it. You could probably automate it, but you might not want to. So what is that process to deal with migrations on different branches or even in master whenever you're doing development? So let's cover scenario one. We have a branch here and we have a branch here and they each have migrations that conflict with each other. So if I'm doing development in feature branch X and I have five migrations or whatever, let's say I have migration two, three, four, and five, six, and seven. So I started out at two the, the two is the base one that's also in master. So I'm doing my development, but I need to go test feature Y so I can merge this pull request that this guy has uh, pushed up there. So what I do is I do manage.py migrate app name uh, 0002. So that rolls back all of my migrations all the way back to 002, which is in master. So now I switch branches over to feature branch Y and I do manage.py migrate, and I migrate all of the new migrations to the current latest version that I need. So from there, I do my testing and everything looks great, and I'm ready to move on because I've merged the pull request. So now we get into the situation in the second scenario I described, where we have migrations in master, and we don't have them in our feature branch X, but we still have those migrations that we have to deal with because now they're kind of out of sync with master. And it's up to us, since our branch isn't in master, to resolve this conflict. So what do we do? We switch back over to master branch X, and we've rolled back all of our changes. So what we want to do is we want to go into the data migrations that we've created in this case, and effectively copy out that code that does the data migration for us into a separate file temporarily. We then delete all of the migrations from pass two, so three, four, five, six, and seven, we delete all of those. And then we merge master into our branch. So now we have whatever it is that was in master and caught up, let's say it goes to three. Now that we have three, we have other migrations and model things that we have to deal with. And this is kind of frustrating because we might need to do a chunk of migration, a chunk of model changes, and then we need to do a data migration and then follow that up with some more model changes. And this is where it continues to get a little bit hairy. What we need to do then is kind of think back to the development that we were doing, comment out the models that we need before the data migrations, sorry, comment out the models that we need after the data migrations. And that way, when we do a make migrate or make migrations, it doesn't create those models for us. So then we do our make migrations, it creates this migration for us. Then we do a create for our data migration, copy that code back into our data migration that we had. Then we uncomment the code out and create a new migration for the rest of our code. From there, we're, we're good to go again. We're set up where we have all of the migrations we had originally. In this case, we have three migrations instead of the five original that we had because it kind of shrunk them down a little bit. 
Then we also have the stuff from feature branch Y that went into master and then is now merged in. We also have the benefit of all the stuff in master is now in our branch. So it increases the possibility of actually being able to merge our branch into master when we create a pull request later. So it's kind of process um, intensive and you kind of have to use your brain a little bit, but it works well. It, I, we rarely had an instance where like we just can't recover it and actually I can't really think of any other than someone really messed something up on their system and they kind of have to scrap a bunch of stuff, do some funky cherry picks and all kinds of things like that. Uh, but for the most part, 99.99% .99 of the time, this process has allowed us to do development on some very large code bases uh, for the last several years without running into uh, migration conflicts between branches. The biggest issue is if you forget and you go across a bunch of branches and you forget to migrate back, then you kind of have to inspect and deal with a little bit. We've even run into situations where I've not dealt with it, it gets merged into master and then I go back over to my branch, I merge it back in and crap things aren't working or uh, the migration makes it in but the tables are already there for some reason because I never rolled them back. Well then I have to go in and do some fakes because somewhere along the way I did a delete migration or delete ghost migrations and it gets all kinds of funny. So if you stick with the simple process and remember to do it you're gonna be fine. You might have to get to a situation where you've deleted all your ghost migrations, you've done the migrate delete most ghost migrations, and it'll ask you sometimes. And then you just have to do all the fakes that you have to get in there. Sounds tedious, it doesn't sound like a lot of fun, but it's actually not that bad of a process. If you've solved this other ways, please let me know, leave a comment below and let us all know and I'll be glad to hear other ways to solve this. Uh, but this is just one way that I've done it and I've talked to others and that's how they do it as well. Please feel free to subscribe and join us in our next video. And if you like this video today, go ahead and leave us a thumbs up. Thank you for watching and have a great day.